speech will be elected as the best speech because whether the delegates uh, will follow what all they learnt here, what all lectures they uh, they heard, they will immediately go and follow Shyam's way of getting literatures from the pub, from the pub and scholar. I thank the organizers, I mean uh, Dr. Shivakumar to give me a chance. Now what is the purpose of uh, research? You know, medical care, be it uh, small clinic or be it an institution or be it a private hospital, to promote the well-being of the individual patients is medical care, as well as, you know, systematic and organized scientific process to find answers to questions, that, res that is research. So, where, wherever we are, as uh, Dr. Shyam said, a uh, doctor in, uh, in a remote place in Islam could do it, then why not we? So, it's all observation. So, see, we, if we intervene in a, intervene in a procedure, we do something for a patient, meet uh, drug surgery or so. The outcome may be a good outcome or a bad outcome or it may be equal. That we'll have to spo so research is a spontaneous and inseparable outcome in our study. So these acts of patient care are analogous to experiments. So because of uh, the higher hierarchy of uh, research methodology, some may find it difficult. And uh, now that we have to get good consent informed concern from the patient, that itself is a nice document. And uh, of course, the basis to research is documentation as every one of us know. And D for doctor and D for documentation. Also, they don't forget about the D which we are drivers on Sunday for our excellency. So sometimes the researchers may be a little uh, not richer, not read at researcher. There's a Tusky study where they didn't give antibiotics to uh, study syphilis. It was a bad study. It shouldn't, it, it's not acceptable. So, uh, manipulating your research is not accepted. So, don't be a perverted researcher. So, you'll have to explain everything to the patient before you do. For, a, for example, arthritis ankle can be fused or it can be reconstructed. You'll have to tell the advantages and disadvantages of so the uh, subject before you do that. Uh, likewise, stem cells, it's not proven. So, before giving the therapy, you'll have to tell them that it's not proven. You can't just do for the sake of it. So, if Chande and Ponsetti would have kept quiet without publishing their articles, there would not have been any THR or Ponsetti techniques. So, it's a moral obligation. So, we can have a team of clinical uh, people as well as uh, research people together to publish. So we can start with small case reports and then go to randomized control trials. So we'll have to find a balance between clinical care and research. So the combining the two, pa two passions, in academic research, academicians will have, uh, research will have upper hand and in clinical clinicians will have upper hand. So you'll have to combine both collaboratively and cooperatively with equal value and input. So Dr. Peter Bonuti is a person who settled in, U I mean, who was in U.S. in a town of just 12,000 and still did, did research. So in undergraduate, uh, in ICMR allows some small short-term studentship program for the undergraduates to uh, promote interest and attitude for research among undergraduates. And PG dissertation also will give a good idea about research methodology and stimulate interest in research. Of course, a PG dissertation book was, uh, has been written by Dr. Ravi, Dr. Geetanjali, who is the director of AIMS in Bhuvaneshwar now, with the Dr. Manigandan, who is an old student of Madurai. So, it, uh, it give critical analysis is the one which uh, dissertation tries to put inside PG so that they will do research later. So, they have, they have studied uh, in Saudi Arabia and found out that in Canada, 43% had no significant involvement in research pro pro project among the undergraduates and and part of them didn't know what it was actually. In Germany, their involvement was more. In India, you know, the research experience medical school is far less. So, uh, lack of professional supervisors, training courses, time and funding are blamed. So, Malaysian study says that research should be included in the curriculum of undergraduates itself. Augusto Sarmiento say, gives an opinion in U.S. because they have uh, research in their rotations. Some are interested and some are not interested. Now, Dr. Paul Sankran laments, research in India is at very low end. So, uh, every, uh, scientific evidence to make decisions about the care of individual patients is all evidence-based medicine about. And we formulate a question 
and identify the articles as uh, already told by Dr. Shia and apply evidence and re-evaluate. So there's clinical and basic research and there are problems, there are uh, the clinical problems cannot be solved by clinical research alone and of course you have to respect the ethics. You should not take others work and uh, AOS and uh, good clinical uh, uh, good clinical practice guidelines and uh, a medical research council all have formulated uh, guidelines for that and you have to get the informed consent and uh, basic research should be guided by clinicians to get a good clinical uh, result. So we can do animal experiments but uh, you should have some facilities and uh, this is uh, in primitive stage in India as all of us know and we can we are allowed to use small uh, laboratory bred animals. So here you can see in a place where the state of art research facilities and adequate finding are more, that's both sides of Atlantic, still there are people who say they, they don't do, they are not interested in research because of lack of role model, their family responsibility, pressure to earn more, peer pressure to earn fame by successful clinical practices. Of course the surgeons are burdened by many things but lack of enthusiasm is one and uh, Research is a necessity as Anand Jain puts it. So we have to translate all our experience of clinical practice into published research to solve all our clinical problems. So one of the premier institute, if you, if you go through their activity report, they have published 170 publications in international journals and 35 in the uh, peer-reviewed journals. And Jain says, every experience while reading the numeral clinical conditions, if evaluated scientifically, helps in providing evidence-based treatment. Likewise, small innovations, modifications will, if scientifically evaluated, becomes credible, credible, credible research. To get, so you, they say, he says that you will get addicted to research. So it's by critical analysis. So multi-center collaborative for orthopedic research in India says, trauma research outlook from India is currently insufficient. But we, sh we have the opportunity for global leadership in India because, for, because of the number of cases we get, because of the number of centers we have. Uh, coincidentally, uh, you have been seeing research papers now. Now you will see a, see a man who has done more research among us after my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Program, because Tomorrow I have to go for this inauguration. So, so with the vision and vision of uh, Dr. Rajshikar and Raj Sabhavati, we felt that the next trauma practice that is going to be improved would be by having the air ambulance. So that is the motor at which this has been started. And this is how it looks. So it has got a bed for the patient and then Four of them can accompany, two pilots, one attender and one paramedic can go with the patient. <coughs> so that is why I'm here, in, uh, I'm taking over for 10 minutes so that I can go back. So the topic that I have been given is the Hofas fracture. And the Hofas fracture, if you all know, the classification, I don't want to dwell in detail about it because it's very simple based on the level of the fracture it has been divided into A, B, C. And more distal it is, there is a more posterior it is, it becomes difficult to manage, it can end up with AVM. The Hofer's fracture actually is a major challenge. Actually, it is not only a major challenge to treat, but diagnosis also a little bit of uh, difficulty because suddenly you might miss it. And then treatment methods, if you look, various forms of treatment methods like screws, plates, and if you ask me what is the current trend, they actually started using the calcaneal plate for hopus fracture. So the exposure, again, you have to get a good exposure of the hopus fracture. And whatever it is, sometimes you can end up with late collapse and avascular necrosis. So this, if you look, suddenly if you casually, if you look, probably you might miss this hopus fracture. So you can see that if you draw a uniform circle over there, so it will be like, so you can see that there is a depression over there and then you can uh, split that is to be seen. So that is how you suddenly you can miss this whole pass also. 
And also it must be remembered that in one of the paper it is said that one third of supracondylar fractures can have a FOFAS fracture. So if it, in all supracondylar fractures, you must take traction views and then you must also take CT scan it in, in appropriate cases. If it is comminuted, complex fractures, you must take a CT scan to see any FOFAS fractures are available, is there. And then if you are looking at it, see like you can put this uh, sort of a curved, curved line over this and then the exact similar curved line if you put, so you will see that there is a uh, break on the other. Uh, so like that you can de determine your COFAS element. But why is it important? So if we all talk about COFAS fracture, we all talk about the coronal splits, but why, why is it important that it is it has to be done properly? If you look at it, this entire distal femur is not a circle by itself. Actually it is a circle with two circles which are of different dimensions. So it is like one would be a bigger circle, the other would be a smaller circle. So you have to put superimpose both of them together and to get an oblong structure so that it becomes like this. So that is why it is not a truly a good circle. So it is like an oblong area of a sur surface. And then because of that what happens is when there is an arc of motion that is happening, that arc is not truly on like a circle. It will be trans that is why you have in knee, it is not only uh, moving in one circle, but also there is a translation, there is also like all the phenomena that are talked about rollback and things like that do happen. And then here you can see that these So the treatment methods that you can apply is like screws, a plate can be added and also the various ways which, which you can use. So there are many thickness of the screws that can be used, there can be Herbert screws that you can use and the regular 4.5 screws or 6.5 screws, whatever depending upon the size of the screw. But the difficulty is in achieving that curvature because even if you achieve it, sometimes because the uh, fixation is not good enough, it can undergo a late collapse. So here you can see that there is a fixation that has been done and then you can see this curvature is good whereas when you apply the same curvature here you can see that the depressed fragment has not come back to its position. So that is what you need to uh, look at it and because of the late collapse again you are looking at a scenario of uh, doing it right in the very first instance. And then whenever there is an articular fracture we always look at a rafting technique. For example, if it is a tibia, proximal tibia, even in a distal pylon or in the wrist, to all look at a rafting technique to prevent any collapse. Similarly, the same principle can be used here also. You can use any of the methods, like you can use a reconstruction plate or you can use any of the uh, available locking plates, even the, now that calcaneal locking plate, all of them can be used as a rafting technique. So the surgical technique, if you look, <coughs> So here, you need to gain a good exposure. Suppose if you get end on view, if you get the end on view of the bone, then only you will be able to do COFAS fracture perfectly. If you are not able to get the end on view, if you don't see it completely, then you tend to miss either the impaction or the comminution. Many times when it is comminuted, it is a segmental comminution. So you will see that two levels of COFAS that would be there, and the center portion is the one which is usually impacted and we never try to elevate that central portion and that is why whenever we fix it in a AP view it might look alright whereas in a lateral view if you use those concentric circle method of applying it onto the bone you will see that the central portion is always impacted and it doesn't come back to its position. So you have to make sure that these are reduced well and once it is reduced you can use the screws to go in to hold it and that may not be just sufficient, so you need to hold on to have you know, a periarticular fracture fixation system with locking screws so that you can also have a rafting technique then. So what is important is the reduction and the elevation of those distal fragments and whenever you elevate whatever the gap that is there, you might add a bone graft or bone substitute and then of course whatever is your choice, screws or the plate in addition, if you want to use a plate, you can use. 
So we also had a study that was given as a thesis to one of the one of our uh, uh, student, and then see we, he he did the study, and then in all these he could take all these fractures into account. He also took the isolated hofas and also those with supracondylar fractures, and then when we applied those periarticular system as a and in fact, we didn't use a locking plate. We used regular semi-tubular plate, molded into the shape, and then we used it as a rafting technique. And then in these situations, all these fractures, we had to reduce it well. And then once it is reduced and fixed, and then we analyzed all of them. At the end of it, what we could found is that, see like, this actually holds very well. So when it is holding very well, so what happens is at least two screws must go on to, so that is from the plate. Initially you hold it with screws as the interfragmentary and then you neutralize it with this plate and then when you go it, they all have a good results. So this is what we did in, in this. The reason I am putting all this is because it is one of the techniques that you need to learn because now the plating of the hofers is a new trend that we need to learn. And then once it is done, you can see that in our series, we had a good reduction. We, we could achieve a good circular configuration. All the segments were analyzed and got in to reduce and there was no collapse. So we also compared it with the literature. So in our series, you could see that we can term it everything as good, from good to excellent. And then when we compared it in the literature, all the literature had less number of patients than ours and then the knee movements or any of the results there was up to around 80 percent of them did well but none of them beyond that so this was the done one of our uh, postgraduate by name arun raj did the thesis and then we could uh, this is the 41 patients that we did and then we had a good results out of it to conclude what is important is this in hofas fracture it is a primary anatomical reduction that is very very important in one of the slide, I, I don't know whether I, I skipped it or something like that. See, what happens is when we are doing a re replacement also or a unicompartmental replacement also, if you look, it is the posterior portion that you need to replace. It is not the anterior one. So it is the posterior surface of the entire circumference that is forming your knee movement. So that is very important. It is the pofas element that is very important. If it is not reduced well, either they have a medial lateral instability or when they are going from extension to flexion, again that circumference, uh, that uh, movement again becomes improper. So and then they end up with severe pain and you need to either get, uh, the, if there are various reconstruction options are there like patella can be used as a reconstruction option in those scenarios. So it is important to have a good primary anatomical reduction and also like Hofa's fracture associated with supracondylar fracture they often have inferior results compared to isolated Hofa's fracture. This is a very important finding. So there is no static difference between a functional outcome between those which have plate and those which do not have plate also. So that is why we found that what is important in success of Hofa's fracture is identifying the combination and identifying the impaction. If you can identify both of them and then with a good CT picture, then you make sure that you elevate as well as fix it very nicely. They all have a good results. Thank you.